Good morning, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Um, uh, first of all, uh, before we get going, I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank all of our fans uh, for another terrific year. Um, you know, th this arena has become uh, just. Uh, I mean, it's always been a great place to play, but I think the last couple of years, it's it's just elevated so much, and that's that's due to the excitement that our fans have showed, uh, the passion, um, the dedication to our to our team, and uh, it, it doesn't go unnoticed. This is uh, this is just a great place for our players to you know to play every every night, and uh, we we really do appreciate it. I'd also like to thank everybody at the Minnesota Wild that. Uh, that make these seasons happen. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, by magic. There's a lot of hard work involved, not just from the hockey side of things, but on the business side of things, with uh, you know people that sell tickets and sponsorships and make money so we can spend it. And uh, you know our, our digital team is excellent. Our, our PR staff is fantastic. So there's a lot of work that goes on, and, and uh, I just want to make sure everybody knows how much. We appreciate it on the on the hockey side, and and uh, so thank you. Um, I guess just a little recap of of, uh, of the season. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would I would I would say this. Um, I don't view this season as a failure. I do not. Did we reach our ultimate goal? We did not, but the season is not a failure. Um, it is extremely disappointing. Um, I feel like after a slow start, uh, our team regrouped, um, put ourselves back in a good position, uh, had a really good stretch after uh, after coming off the bye week and the All-Star weekend, we struggled again. Um, but you know the the team has become pretty resilient, and put ourselves back in another good position to where we we're competing for the division title. Um, you know, and and I rarely bring this up, but I, I'm going to bring it up today because because it's real and it's important, and I, I think our players and our coaches deserve a lot of credit because they're fighting with one hand tied behind their back because of these cap restraints. Um, and we don't apologize for it. This is it's fine. We're fine with it. But I think our players and our our team have done a fantastic job in just ignoring that and just kind of moving on and, and playing hockey. So um, disappointing in the end, uh, one hundred percent. I'm very disappointed, but I, I I don't view this season as as a failure. It, our our team played well. Um, Back-to-back 100-point -back seasons. Uh, I think it's two out of the. Th we have two of the best seasons that this franchise has ever had, and you know, uh, winning's hard. It's hard, and and we're working towards it. I think I think a lot has been made. There's been this narrative out there right now that that oh the Wild can't get past the first round. They can't get past the first round. That. And I, I can understand the frustration, but there are a small handful of players who have been here for a lot of that. And most of them are new. That that's not, in my mind, that's not the narrative of this team. Um, we have a lot of new players. We have a lot of young players that are just getting going, um, and they weren't part of that. Uh, <laughs> We're going to write our own narrative, but that's not the narrative for this team. And I understand it is frustrating, but I I, I refuse to hold our players that have that are new here responsible for what's happened in the past. So, that being said, um, we're going to move forward and and keep trying to get better and you know continue to try to build a team that that can compete for a championship. And I think we're I think we're doing a lot of good things, on and off the ice, and uh, and you know one day we'll get there. So, um, 
I guess uh, I guess that's my my uh, my take on the season. So uh, I can open it up for questions now. So, Bill, that, that said, um, how do you get this team over the hump when the same? What what hump do you want? What hump do you want us to get over? To get past the first round. Why? I mean, you, what, why? What, yeah. What, what are they going to? And I'm not trying to be a smart ass, Mike. They're not going to put our name on the Stanley Cup to get to the second round. Well, you, they're not going to give us a ring. But you know what? That's not our goal. Our goal is not to make it to the second round. Is it going to feel any better? It's not. Well, to get to the Stanley Cup, you have to get to the second round. So let me ask you this. So what are, what are, what are you going to write? Let me just ask you this. Last year, your power play and your penalty kill killed you in the playoffs. This year, your power play and penalty kill killed you in the playoffs. Yeah. Last year, most of your players did not come through in the playoffs. This year, yet again, your core players. <coughs> so how do you fix that with the cap restraints that you just mentioned with, with one hand tied behind your back? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to fix it. Because we are, we, I mean, we're down 14 million next year, and that's fine. I think we've done a pretty good job of putting a damn good team on the ice with these restraints. So, I, I don't know how. I'm, it's hard because it is disappointing that we haven't gotten past the first round, but. That's not, that's not the that's not the goal. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be great. It'd be awesome to get to the second round. It would. But that's not what we're building towards here. We're not. I, I think that's that's your narrative. That's what you guys write about. We're trying to build something bigger than that. And sometimes there's pain involved. You know, I think if you see, a lot of the championship teams. Uh, They've gone through some pain. Look, look at Tampa Bay. They didn't make the playoffs every year. They went to the conference finals, and they didn't make the playoffs. Like, there are ups and downs. It is a struggle. It is hard. It is hard to – but you know what? We've made the playoffs three years in a row now. With And two of those years are with massive cap hits, dead, dead space. So – when you talk about getting over the hump or, like, I don't know, I think our teams played pretty well. And, it, you know, hey, look, we play good teams in the playoffs, too. They're trying to win, too. And, yeah, you know what, we've had our struggles. Special teams have been a struggle. You know what? Our PK was top ten this year. You know, it did it let us down in the playoffs? Yeah, it did a bit. And, you know what, our, our scoring went dry. And we don't, we don't expect that. I mean, we we had had a real good penalty kill this year and real good power play. Like it's, it just it happened. It's disappointing. Like I said, it's it's. I'm not up here trying to say we did great and we did all this good stuff, but you know, it, yeah, it's disappointing. Bill, what stood out to you the most watching that series and just the difference between the two teams and that it was some reoccurring issues that bothered you in the end again? Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's the thing that bothered me is that there are reoccurring issues. And, you know, we're, we're, we're still learning. Um, it, like I said, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hard, but we have to get better in certain situations, you know, and, you know, we, we did. We took too many penalties. Um, and when we did, we, we struggled on the kill. Um, you know, we, we, we didn't have our, our top guys scoring. Uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough. We, we, lost, we lost an incredibly valuable player in Erickson Eck. Uh, you know, when, when, God, when he took that shot in Pittsburgh, he could, he, I mean, and, and where, where we sit up watching the, the games, you, it was like a deflated feeling because you knew it was bad, and and he's just so important to us. And um, yeah, that that was that was a that was a really big loss. I think I think the injury to Kirill, um I don't think the injury was a, an issue, but you know, I, I think him being out for a month, you don't just jump right back in and just it doesn't matter who you are. You, 
takes you a little while to get going. And I think to, for him to get like uh, to really get back into that rhythm, back into the, the you know the game shaped stuff, it just it, it has an effect on you. So I, I you know, those are those are tough things, you know. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. Billy, you, you mentioned the cap hits, and I know you're not going to make an excuse for them, but yeah. Do you, can you be the team you want to be with those cap hits, or do you have to get through these next two years before you can be a team that can legitimately contend? Well, I think we'd be <laughs> we'd be a better team with without them, like with adding different player, you know, different players with that money. And like I said, we'll get there. But I do think that – I think we made some pretty good moves at the deadline and added some guys that were good players for cheap, and that's what we're going to have to continue to do to manage this whole thing. Um, but, you know, any, anything can happen. I, I, I think maybe I, I, I think differently than a lot of people. Maybe people think I'm in la-la land thinking that we can win and this and that. But – I just always think we can win, and I, I refuse. Hey, look, the honesty, those, those capits, yeah, they affect us. They, in, but I'm fine with that because we've been a good team. It's just a matter of putting it together at the right time, I guess, like our our, our playoffs. For Dean Orville, uh, we talked to a few of the players yesterday that were injured. Are there any other – Notable injuries for players going yeah, into the offseason. Anyone down, that yeah. will require surgery? Or uh, Goudreau is going to have surgery. Uh, he had an, like a abdominal uh, injury, uh, and that's been going on for that's been going on for four months that he's been playing with that. Um, Eric Sinek had surgery last week. Um, Hartman uh, Hartman was injured in game one. Um, you know. Couldn't play game two, and then you know he was playing on on an injured knee. Um, uh, Zuccarello was uh, like a high groin, and obviously Shaw. And uh, I think I'm not, I'm not missing any. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Bill, oops, sorry. that's all right. Um, you had mentioned growing pains, and that you are building to make a true contender team, does that then look like, okay, you missed the playoffs one year and that's going to have to be okay? Not to lower your expectations by any mean, but looking at it from that perspective, I mean, because that would be something that hasn't happened here for quite some time. I mean, is that what it might look like, especially the next year or two with those cap hits? Uh, it's not what I'm going for. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, no, look, you know what? Craig, Craig and I have talked about this at, at length, and uh, e even even while I was interviewing for this job, and quite frankly, neither of us had time for or the stomach for a, a rebuild, and we felt we were good enough to to kind of do it on the fly, and I, I think we're doing a good job of that. I think you know we've we've kept all our picks and things like that. We've got some really good young players in the system that are gonna they'll be here soon. Um, and I think they'll, I think they'll help. I think, uh, you know, but it, it, honestly, I wish I could kind of speed things up and, you know, get some of these kids here now, but, um, no, I, I don't, I don't want to miss the playoffs. Yeah. That's not, that's not my goal. And I know it's not Tino's goal. Uh, and it's definitely not the player's goal that, you know, I, I, I always say general managers and ownership, they, they are the ones that want to rebuild. Coaches and players, they don't care about that stuff. They just want to, they just want to win. They just want to coach, and they want to play, and they want to win every night. Dean, as you know, you see Boston ball out in the first round of the playoffs, and, and sometimes you wonder about pace of the regular season and you know, do they go for it and spend too much time. Well, is there an ideal pace? The, the parity in the NHL is different than any other major league, the, the eight to one, the little that separates it. Is there a rhythm or a something during the regular season to, to get to a place where you're playing your best hockey in the playoffs, or is that very, very difficult to navigate and figure out? 
Well, I think to your point, it's, uh, it's, it's such a hard league, as Billy said. It's a tough league to win, and um, the teams are so close, so good. I mean, any, any team getting into the playoffs has an opportunity, as Billy said, to, to win the championship, and we believe that. And is there a, you know, a point? You know, there's ups and downs throughout the entire season, as ours was. Billy just talked about, I mean, at one point we were out of the playoffs and then at one point we were in first place and then and then we just kind of, you know, settled in and, and, and played really strong hockey right at the end. And, yeah, we thought that we were going in, you know, uh, at, at as high a pace as we could. And as we said, there's some injuries, some circumstances that, that maybe didn't allow us to play our best hockey in situations, but... Um, but yeah, we liked the way that we were playing the game, um, you know, obviously going in. And as Billy said, we, as a coaching staff, are extremely frustrated with, as you guys have just talked about, the, the same things that happened last year um, with our power play and our penalty kill. Yeah, we were much improved during the regular season, and we put a huge emphasis on that. When we got to the spot where we needed it to be better, than it was obviously last year and then obviously through the, the regular season, it was not. And credit to the opponent, obviously, they had a great power play. They had really good face-off people. Um, and consequently, they, uh, they, they outscored us, obviously, in the special teams department. Five on five, um, if you look at all the stats, which we have and talked about the last couple of days, we were marginally the better hockey club. So. Sure, do we have to stay out of the box? Absolutely. Does our power play and penalty kill have to get better? Not only through the regular season, but when we get to the postseason, it has to help us win hockey games and hopefully go through rounds. Bill, you, you mentioned young players in your system coming up, and I want to see if you can touch on a couple of them for us. Uh, Keelan Addison and Marco Rossi, you know, both guys started the year with you guys, and Keelan ran the power play for a while, played 60 games, you know, scratched on the stretch, and Marco spent a lot of time in development in AHL. Where are they at in their development, and where do you see them as far as in the big picture of where you guys are going next year? Uh, you know, Marco, yeah, he he started strong. Uh, you know, had a good rookie tournament, had a really good training camp, um, but just wasn't ready. Um, and I, I think the worst thing for that we could have done was just kind of force him into lineup every night, and, and you know, that, that would have – that would have hurt his development. So I, I think he was in the best place possible, and that was in the American Hockey League. And, um, you know, he played a lot of minutes. He played every situation. He did exactly what, uh, you know, what was asked of him. And, um, you know, I think Marco's going to spend the, the bulk of the summer here, uh, you know, to, to focus on his fitness over here rather than going back home, uh, which, is, which is great. And... Uh, you know, he's a dedicated kid, but, you know, for somebody like Marco, you know, he's a high draft pick. There's a lot of lot of talk about him. And maybe some guys from his draft are playing right now or whatever, but everybody develops at a different at a different speed. And, you know, we've just got to make sure that we're, we're doing the right things for Marco uh, as we go along because um, we, we don't want to do – we don't want to put him in positions to fail. And um, – you know, or, or to stunt his uh, development. Um, you know, Addy. Uh, yeah, he was he was he was great on the power play, uh, but you know, he really struggled five on five. And you know, we Dino and I both had you know uh, good talks with him uh, yesterday. And he he has ability. He has ability to uh, you know be better five on five, and he needs to be, and that needs to be his focus. Um, you can't just be a specialty player uh, in the National Hockey League. You, it's just too good. You, you, there's there's no room on the a roster for the, just a specialty guy. So um, we know he has the ability. It's just a matter of uh, you know focusing in on it and getting to work on it. And you know he's still a young he's still a young player. And um, you know there's there's some there's more growing to do. A um, <clears throat> couple of the younger players yesterday uh, were pretty self-critical about their performance in the playoffs, felt they disappointed themselves and their teammates. 
um, Boldy, Carrill was felt that said he was healthy but wasn't doing what he needed to do. Philip Gustafson said the same thing that after game one felt he was only average. I wonder what your conversation was like, especially with those younger core players. What's your message to them in the off season? What did you hear from them as they head off into the off season? Because they're so important to you know the things that we're talking about here today and in, in moving this team forward. Uh, well, you know what? The conversations are extremely honest. Um, but, you know, it's not – I will tell you this, as frustrated as – or as disappointed as I am or Dean is or the fan base or anybody sitting in here, the players are more – the players are, are, are more disappointed than anybody. And they are – they're not – they're not happy about this. They're not. And, yeah, they are. You know what I think when when you have uh, uh, when you have good character, yeah, you, you can look in the mirror and say, you know what, I, I didn't do enough. And I, I think those guys were, were, you know, man enough to, to be hold themselves accountable. And they are. And, um, you know, for me, in talking to, you know, a guy like Boldy, it's, it's – uh, you know his his style of play in the playoffs doesn't. You know he's he's got to change certain things in his game to have more. It, it is it, it is a different game in the playoffs. It's just different. And you know that's I think a lot of people get frustrated with that in hockey, but I think it's one of the things that makes hockey great is that it is a whole different ball game. And you know you know you you look at you look at the goals that are scored like they're they're hard goals like they're. There's not a lot of pretty goals, and you just you got to get your nose dirty. And you know, for him, that that's something that he's got to work on. Um, you know, I don't want to speak for you, but that's that's kind of how my meetings went. Uh, Billy, the um, going back to Rusi and um, and uh, Addison, uh, just how important will their off seasons be? Because it just feels like. You're going to need somebody to run that power play next year. Um, so, how important is it for Addison to, you know, improve that play? And, and for Rossi, you know, you were, you know, the Erickson Eck injury obviously killed you. I mean, for him to come into next season now ready to play, yeah. how imperative is that? And also, can I ask, uh, have you made any changes to the coaching staff? You just slid that one in there. Yeah. Uh, um, off season training, it's important for everybody. Um, you know, Especially the younger guys, because you know they're they're just in that stage of their life where they, you know, this what they do now is going to really affect them. You know, not just the the upcoming season, but it, it continues on. So, I, actually, Addy's going to be around here this summer too, and I think I think the guys are really uh, really determined to get better. I, I think um, you know, uh, yeah, they. I mean, they are important. They're extremely important, and we need that. You know, we we can't go out and spend, you know, big dollars on free agents and things like that. So, you know, for for you know Marco and and Kalen to to be ready and come in to have an you know ready to have an impact is is really important for us. And um, you know, I I'm constantly evaluating, uh, you know, every every position. Uh, you know whether it's uh, you know hockey ops, coaching, scouting, whatever. I'm not I'm not even close to anything right now. Um, you know I, I yeah no I haven't I haven't even got into that yet. Um, but you know what I our coaches are good. Like I you know like I said I you know there's been a lot to be made about our special teams. They were they were good in the regular season. You know and and. Uh, you know, I think what Dean said, you have to give Dallas some credit on on, on having a really good power play. Um, so that's where I am on that. Same with the Iowa coaching staff, what you're looking for to fill that out. Well, I'm sorry, with the same? Iowa, Iowa's coaching yeah, staff. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're just a couple of days out, so I, I work fast, but not that fast. Uh, Bill, what will your – Priorities, your biggest priorities be this off season. What you know, with your, the means available, what would you like to try to change or improve with this roster? Yeah, 
it's I, I honestly I, I we haven't had meetings or anything like that you know we're we're, we're not quite there we have I think uh, we announced it a little while ago that we're we agreed to a two-year contract with uh, Marcus Johansson so having him back will really help I think him and Boldy uh, you know had some good chemistry together he's uh, he's he looks like a different player than when we had him before I mean he, he was spectacular so uh, we're extremely excited about that um, you know what our 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 goaltending set for next year. Um, Are you announcing a contract extension? For, is that what you mean? N- no, but he's restricted. So. What do you expect from that negotiation then, or the way that Philip performed this season? What he will merit? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll we'll get something done. You know, I mean, we you know uh, his agent and I had talked uh, earlier this year. Um. And we, we just decided to put things on hold until after the season and see where kind of everything everything fell. And, you know, Philip had a great year, and we're excited to start the negotiation process and, and get him signed to a contract. Um, yeah, he's a good young goalie. Bill, do you, do you go into the year um, viewing him as the number one goalie and anticipate having to pay him like that? Uh, well... A lot of the number one goalies make real big money. Um, you know, six, seven, eight million. I don't see it getting there. But you know, we'll 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 see it. I, I yeah. I mean, as a number one goalie, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know. Dean, you said. Of course, the year you and your staff had talked a lot after the playoffs last year and reevaluated, you know, what you could have done done differently and had conversations with the players. Like, as a coach, you've been a coach for a long time. What is your self evaluation process after a season like this? Like, what do you look at? What kind of? I know it's hindsight's twenty twenty, but what do you look at in terms of things you might want to do better? Yeah, no, a couple a couple of days ago, we sat in the, the entire coaching staff and we went over every single decision that we made. Um, you know, uh, in the playoffs, certainly. Um, you know, what we could have did better, different, changed. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of them, but, yeah, there's there's mistakes that were made. There's no question. Um, we we have to be better as a, as a coaching staff to get our team prepared to win in the playoffs. Um, very disappointing, uh, you know, again, to be up 2-1 and not be able to, to kind of have that, desperation game that that nail down they, they get it done and um, so we're going to continue to to evaluate obviously we're like Billy said it's fresh it's new but we're uh, we've started the process and had uh, uh, real good chats and and the one thing about our coaching staff is that we don't hold punches about each other um, we call each other out to decisions and and all that kind of stuff which I really like um, it makes us all accountable, the same as we want our hockey club. So we'll continue to talk about it and hopefully make the right decisions. We get back to the spot that we want to be. Bill, the other four UFAs brought in via trade in season. Will you consider re-signing them like you did with Johansson, or where are you at with those four potentially? Uh, we're leaving all our options open with those guys, and you know we'll have discussions uh, down the road a little bit. Billy, you talked about playoff hockey versus regular season hockey. Is there a way to build a team that's successful in the playoffs versus a team that's successful in the regular season? Are there different elements that a team needs to possess? I think you see it every year because there's a Stanley Cup winner every year. And they have to be good in the regular season and the playoffs. So, yeah, it's possible. So do you, see, do you see that with this group or, or what's missing from here? Yeah, to get I, to that point? No, I, I, I see it. I, I, I think our team can play any brand of hockey that you want. I think we have skill. I think we have speed. I think we have, you know, a pretty rugged team. Um, you know, we have good size. You know, but so do other teams. But, yeah, you, you have to. I mean, you can't. Yeah, I mean, you have to. You have to have a team that can have success in in both seasons. Like it, it just doesn't. 
it doesn't work any other way. You know, I, I think there's different philosophies out there, different different ways. There, I mean, a ton of different ways to build a team, but um, yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to play a lot of different brands of hockey. In my mind, that's my opinion. Bill, uh, that Dumba situation. How do you evaluate that? And will you stay in touch with him, or was the exit meeting part yeah. of your last communication? Or you no, know, Matt and I had a really good talk yesterday, and. Um, you know we've been we've been real open and honest with each other and uh you know this whole year and it's 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 tough but you know yeah we'll we'll be in we'll be in contact with him um matt's matt's been a heck of a player i i, I for this organization for a long time now i think honestly the last three months um you know he's played just some some great hockey for us uh you know what he was he simplified his game a lot. He, he limited his his mistakes or turnovers or whatever you know his his high risk stuff and really settled in and played a solid role for us. And um, it was some of the best hockey I'd seen him play. Um, you know he, he's yeah he's just a great kid. You know and and I, I yeah we'll we'll be we'll be talking down down the road. But we had a we had a real good talk yesterday and. Uh, yeah, he was good for us. Uh, Bill, on, on that subject, how, how do you create extra flexibility this summer? Because right now, with the Johansson signing, you're about eight with a lot of guys, a lot of open spots. Yeah, it's going I mean, quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and, and you know, what were your conversations like with Goligoski yesterday? Would he be open to maybe a, a change of scenery? You know, I, Goose and I had a good talk yesterday. We didn't talk long. I, I think with. Um, uh, you know, with his situation, I think it just we just we needed more time than we actually had, so we haven't really had our talk. Um, but you know what, we're you know I I don't know what's gonna you know happen with him, but right now he's he's still a member of our team. He's got another year left on his deal, and um, you know we'll 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 go over his year uh, you know in a little while. But like like I said, our, our meeting was was short, and and you know we're gonna get together uh, somewhere down the road here. What what else did you ask? Sorry. Yeah, we're we're gonna be tight. I tell you, it, we we have looked at it a little bit already. Um, you know, we have certain numbers in mind for certain players. Um, you know, Chris has worked all you know all season long, like. Just kind of look, you know, preparing for next year. Man, how do we create more space? It's 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 going to be tough. But you know what? We have, you know, like a guy like Faber, uh, you know, making under a million bucks. That that hopefully will continue his play. Like things like that are going to be really important for us to have younger players in the lineup or cheaper or or you know maybe maybe it's a veteran guy who's a uh, you know at a cheaper number. But you know, we might we might have to make some moves um, to create space. It's there's a number of there's a number of ways that we can do it. Um, like I said, I haven't haven't been doing too much of that in the last couple of days, but um, we'll we'll figure something out. Dean and Bill, I guess I'm an oversimplified, a novice approach to the playoffs. I was talking to a hockey guy the other day, and we were just talking about winning and losing in the playoffs, and they said, it's simple. You get a lead and you have a pretty good goalie because the playoff teams have such good blue lines and whatnot that once you get a lead, it's really difficult to win. Uh, piggybacking on what Jim said, is there anything strategically that can be done to try to be really good in the first period or the second period, or does, does, is there any thought to that in the playoffs? Because, it, you know, you watched last night and – have New Jersey get a second goal, it was like, this thing's over. That's the way it felt anyway. D does it feel that way? Well, I, would, would we like to score the first goal every every game? Sure, right? Um, did we have looks and opportunities? Um, yeah, we, we really did. We thought our starts um, in, in every game, to be honest with you, was real good. And we didn't, uh, we didn't capitalize. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's something to that for sure. Um, to get up and in 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 games, and we didn't do it enough throughout uh, throughout that series. Bill, you mentioned the um, the pain from some teams that have before they go 
reached their goal. You mentioned Tampa, and I was there obviously for a lot of it. They missed the playoffs once, but they went on a lot of deep playoff runs as well, where the young players got that, that value of experience, where they were ready to make that jump when they were get to that final point. How much value is there in winning a round, though? They don't give you the cup for it, but isn't there that value for young players to, or for free agents later on that will sign with you guys like, hey, this is a team that actually can go and and win this kind of thing? Yeah, no, I do see value in it, but. What I was saying earlier is that, that that's not our goal. Like, we don't sit here and say, oh, God, we just want to win one round. That's not what – that we don't focus on that. We want to win the Stanley Cup. So, yeah, there is value in that. There, it's experience. And you know what? Grinding it out. And you know what? I remember beating Tampa in the conference finals. And then they – they they I think they missed the, the, the playoffs the next year. Yeah, their their players got all that experience, and it's paid off for them. You know, I remember them. You know, I also remember them getting swept by Columbus, and that's another that's another way to get experience. It's not good. It, it's not fun, but it's experience. And you know what? Our our young players. You know, a guy like Boldy. You know what? He didn't play the way he wanted to play this year, but you know what? Now he's got two years of playoff experience, and yeah, sure. Of course, I get it. We want to advance. We do. But the way we think, our goal is not, oh, God, let's just win a round. That's not it. That's not the way we think.